And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M O L L E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skin. <laughs> Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes, welcoming you to the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's play is a modern melodrama with the emphasis upon terror and suspense. It's entitled The Creeper, and is the story of a mysterious killer of that name, an unknown madman who terrifies an entire city by a series of murders. And just who is The Creeper? Well, answering that question is the challenge of tonight's play. And Joseph Ruscole, the author, has cleverly fashioned a story deliberately designed to fool you. So be on your guard. You've had fair warning. Oh, gee, Mr. Barnes, I'm scared before we even get started. Oh, and say that reminds me. Men, if just the thought of shaving gives you the willies because you have wiry, hard-to-cut whiskers or tender skin, try this. Shave with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Yes, sir, with Mole, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless cream for tender skins. That's right. Mole is the shaving cream that's heavier, the cream that's especially good for a wiry, hard-to-cut beard or a tender skin. Because Mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straighter, and your razor clips them off clean as a whistle. So you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly with Mole, the heavier brushless cream for tender skins. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, The Creeper. kitchenette of a New York apartment. A man and his wife listened to a morning news broadcast. New York. The unknown killer called the Creeper has struck again, adding a third female corpse to his toe. Virginia Peters, a comely waitress, was found strangled to death in her third floor apartment early this morning while her radio blared. As in the previous murders, a note was found scrawled on the wall with the victim's lipstick and the plea, for heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. Police insist... Oh. Why'd you turn it off? How awful. How awful. And in this very neighborhood. Let's hear the rest. It intrigues me. Oh, you. Don't go turning that radio on against Steve Grant. I've heard enough. Go out of my mind, for heaven's sake. That's it. That's a good, solid clue. What is? For heaven's sake. How many men ever use that expression? Oh, shut up. Okay, Mrs. Grant. Pass the biscuits, my little pigeon. Pass the biscuits. Eat, eat, eat. Three women in three days murdered in cold blood by a mad fiend right here in the Heights. I'm too sick to go out, too scared to stay in. The locks broke. And he sits there eating, eating, past the biscuits. There's nothing wrong with my appetite, my love. Well, of course. That's what costs you your job on the police force. Why, oh, well, when I even think of it. Some men drink to escape. I eat. Escape what? What? An ugly tongue, a beautiful face, and a roving eye. In short, a wife. <laughs> See you starting that again. You and your crazy jealousy. Maybe that's the creeper's way of escaping, too, Georgia. Who knows? Oh, shut up. Go ahead and get a divorce. Go ahead. Can I help it if men look at me? I don't know why you come home at all. Where do you go? What do you do with yourself? Where were you this morning, and why'd you come back anyway? To eat. <laughs> Someday I'll lose my appetite for that, too. When I do, my dear. No escape. Well, now I'm off again. Kiss? <sighs> Still using stage lipstick. I'll wipe it off. How many times must I tell you? You're married now, remember? Oh, Steve, wait. Yeah? At least go buy me my medicine. Sorry, no time. Oh, and don't leave me here alone. Stay home this afternoon. Please. I'm afraid. Ah, don't be silly, pet. 
Nothing will happen to you. Keep a doorman here, an elevator boy, Mrs. Stone across the hall, a phone. That's yeah, safe enough. Oh, but the night lock, it doesn't work. Well, now you can't lock me out anymore. Something's happened to it since last night. It doesn't catch. Well, get a new one. Well, I can't get a locksman. I've tried all morning. Oh, oh Stephanie, please. Oh, all right. If I want to phone you, where will you be? Out. Goodbye, my dear. Take care of your cold. <laughs> Well, 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 Steve Grant, huh? Well, if it isn't old Pearly Chase. You, you got thrown off the force, Steve. Yeah, you got thrown off the news, Pearly. You heard wrong. I wasn't fired. I was just warned. Well, I wasn't fired either. Just suspended for three days. I eat too much. That's my trouble. I drink too much. Here you're living up at the Heights, Steve. Yeah. That's funny. Me too. Here you're married now to a beautiful and lovely young... With admiration. <laughs> I can say that again. We used to be on the stage, you know. Yeah, I think I knew her. Wasn't her stage name Georgia Dixon? Oh, that's her. I love that watch, but... Ah, women. How does a guy handle them? Maybe the creeper has the right method. <laughs> Thank you for taking the words right out of my mouth. Who is the creeper, Steve? Any angles? You tell me, and I'll split the reward with you. <laughs> Uh, there's one thing, though, and I don't think even the police have put it together yet. Yeah? In all three cases, just before the creeper struck, the door locks had already been tampered with. I don't say. Yeah. You got a theory? Well, sure. I mean, uh, take that note on the wall. For heaven's sake. In every case, for heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. Right. Now, what man uses an expression like that? The long and short of it is this. The creeper is a woman. <laughs> a ruse. Just like the height of the message from the floor is a ruse. Six feet. And yet I'll lay yards. The creeper's no more than a guy your height, say, or mine. Five nine, just like us, you and me. Only, uh, crazy. How do you figure that? How do I figure lots of things? How do I know where the creeper's gonna strike next? You do? Certainly. The creeper's not so smart, he's just crazy. You play along crazy, see, and you won't jump ahead of him. That's the trouble with the police, why they're up a tree. You expect logical clues from a madman? No, you play along crazy, make out you're the creeper. What's your compulsion? Go ahead, let's see. All right. The victims are all redheads, every one. You've noticed that, of course, three and three days. Now that you They all lived in the heights, right? Agnes Martin, Jane Krutsky, Selma Davis. Right. What was the number of the apartment in each case? <laughs> Agnes lived in 1A, Jane 2B, Selma 3C. Don't ask me the why or the wherefore. Don't ask me the logic. Just play along crazy. You see what I mean? See where he's going to strike next? Mm. Oh, get what The you... next victim of the creeper lives in the heights. She's a redhead. A night lock's been tampered with. She's going to get hers today. And her apartment number is... 4-D. Well, why are you staring at me? You don't like my arithmetic? Why are you staring? My wife's a redhead, Pearly. We live in the Heights. Our apartment number is... <laughs> ah, you're just a boozy reporter. <laughs> Your uh, apartment number? 4D, I told you. Uh, 4D, of course. <laughs> I'll, I'll have it delivered. I was busy admiring your lipstick, Mrs. Grant. I've nothing like it in stock. Uh, 4D, I should have guessed it anyway. Why? Well, a face is a number, believe me. Since you've moved into the neighborhood, Mrs. Grant, for me, it has a... It has a special number, like Double Dandy Delicious Dream, 4D. You see? Ha, <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. I'll bet you tell that to every customer, female. I'm a ladies' man? Like the creeper? Huh? Uh, oh, what did I say? Well, what's going on in this block? Uh, raw nerves, you, you can't joke. The, the 
creeper, the creeper. That's all I hear all day. It's mass hysteria. Oh, there ain't such an animal. You, you don't think so? I assure you, Mrs. Grant, it is a fairy tale. For circulation of the tabloids. I'll send you a prescription up for the boy. Oh, no, no, I'll I just wait here for it. Well, it'll take some time. You should go right home and stay there if you're getting over the flu, believe me. I'll deliver it myself. It'll be a pleasure. No, 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 I'll wait. I, I may not go right back. I don't want to be there all alone. I, I'm afraid. Oh, very well. Uh, suit yourself. Uh, have a seat. For heaven's sake, stop me before I feel more. What? I cannot control myself. <laughs> wait! That creeper's note I had reference to. How such a very tale... Wait, Mrs. Grant, your prescription... Mrs. Grant! Oh, Mrs. Grant! Oh. Oh. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Stone. What's your hurry, dear? Oh, I, I, I just got such a scare. I, since all these awful murders in this neighborhood. Yes, isn't it terrible? You're walking home? Oh, I guess so. I'll go with you. It's good we live in the same house. At least if I had a double lock. But the night one doesn't work. Can't get a locksmith. They're all so busy. Mm. But don't you worry. We'll stay together this afternoon till our husbands come home. Think of it. We've never visited, though we live right across the hall from each other. Isn't that like a big city, for heaven's sake? Or would you rather I dropped in on you? Well, I... Then make it yours, then. Isn't it terrible, the ghastly things they're saying, the theories? One doesn't know what to expect next. You believe the latest? The latest? That maybe it's a woman, the creeper. A woman? Can you beat it? I can't imagine how in the world the police figured that, for heaven's sake, can you? Well, I... I don't know. I, I was just thinking of something my husband said. Though I can see we're a married woman now. If her husband was faithless, say, or perhaps only weak. No will of his own against a vile, cheap thing in skirts. And if the wife, say, was merely getting at those female homebreakers. Well, I can understand such a theory. Because you take my husband now. Mm. You've met Mr. Stone, haven't you? Hmm. Why, Mrs. Grant, why on earth are you staring at me like that, for heaven's sake? Well, I don't feel well. I must get home at once. I feel faint. But, Mrs. Grant, for heaven's sake! As the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Mole Mystery... The big question is, is the creeper a man or a woman? Come to think of it, a man wouldn't use the expression, for heaven's sake, would he, Dan? Well, no, Mr. Barnes, but there are times when he might say a lot worse. For instance, sometimes he's apt to say something like, gee... Uh-oh, oh, watch your language. Well, I was only going to say, jeepers, I'd rather face a firing squad than shave. And say, man, if that's the way you feel about your morning shave, chances are you've got wiry whiskers or a tender skin. So try Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins, and get a shave that's smooth as a waltz. Yes, Mole is a heavier cream, the cream that not only softens your whiskers, but holds them up like a blade of grass and lets your razor mow them down easily. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it and see if you don't say, it's smooth, so smooth, it's slick, so slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Mole. And now back to Jeffrey Barnes and Act Two of The Creeper. Georgia Grant is in terror that she is to be the next victim of a mad killer known as the Creeper. She suspects everyone she meets, both men and women. Now, in panic, she dashes through the streets, unnerved after an encounter with a neighbor, Mrs. Stone. Good afternoon, ma'am. Oh. Out shopping? Oh. I, you're the new doorman, huh? Yeah, just relieving Charlie. Uh, nice weather out. Uh, help you with your packages? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, let me ring the elevator for you. No, you don't have to trouble. 
Oh, no trouble, ma'am. There. Apartment 4D, huh? Eh? Oh, yes. How'd you know? <laughs> Doesn't take long. Going out? Oh, yes, yes. Up and down, up and down. The ups and downs of life, that's me. I'm a living milkshake, Mrs. Grant. Ah. Uh-oh. What's wrong, Jimmy? Stuck. <laughs> Imagine getting stuck between the second and third with a production like you. Get going, Sonny. Do you want me to report you? <laughs> okay, okay. Can't you take a joke? Maybe I, uh... I misconstrued that smile you always give me. Maybe you shouldn't ought to smile that way. Fourth floor. Let me out. <laughs> if I drop in later, would you be more receptive? Oh, oh thank goodness at last. I must have gone out of my mind. Keys. Where's my keys? This darn lock. This darn lock. Is the locksmith in yet? Well, I want to know how soon I can get my lock changed. Yes, of course I left my order. Hello, Georgia. <gasps> Don't you, Why you foolish me. You want the whole house to hear? Hey, that's better. What are you doing here? I'm playing along crazy. What are you talking about? How'd you get in here? <laughs> Alias Pearly Valentine. Take it easy. You haven't a thing to worry about. I've come to protect you. Give me the phone. Hello? Never mind about the lock, thank you. Yeah, a long time no see, Georgia. What do you want, Pearly? Me? <laughs> a headline. Your husband wants, too. He wants I should keep an eye on you. What's that? Sure. You didn't think Steve and I were acquainted, did you? Yeah, from way back. Just met him at a bar. I don't believe you. What do you mean, keep an eye on me? Oh, just in case the creeper. <laughs> You've heard of the character? You're mad. You've always been mad, Pearly Chase. Where is he? Why should he send you? Why should he think the creeper will come here? What are you doing here? I told you, playing along crazy. Got a drink? You're drunk now and you're getting right out of here. You're nothing but a no-good rummy. And you're nothing but a no-good... Die, you finish it. When I took to drink, it was to drown you out, and you know it. I'm still a rum pot, Angel, which means I haven't got rid of you yet. Get out. You little two-timing redhead. You're all the same, you redhead. Why, you... You haven't changed, have you? Even a wedding ring can't do that to you. Oh, come on. Don't play the innocent. My business is snooping. I make a living at it. Between drinks. <laughs> so your new motto's love thy neighbor, huh? Mr. Stone across the hall? Poor dumb Steve. Why, you dirty... <laughs> Sit down, darling. Just play along with me while I play along crazy. Sit down. That's it, just like we're expecting company. Oh, I must be crazy doing this. Why wait here for the creeper? Why not a hundred other streets, a thousand other apartments, a million other dames? Because I'm riding my hunch, that's why. Let's have some music. Don't just sit. Let's have some music. Turn on the radio. Let's dance. That's it. Now let's dance. Give me your arm. Let's dance. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, just like old times, huh? Around and around, just like my brain. Why are you trembling? I still love you, you little fool. Come on, ask me why. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, you lovely redhead. I could kill you and you deserve it. 
With the radio on, you could scream and nobody would hear. I could put my hand on your throat like this, see? And I could strangle <laughs> you. Early, don't! Why are you... Why are you crying? Stop it! I'm here to protect you. Stop crying! Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it! I can't stand it! I never could! Okay, okay, you want me to leave? You want me to leave? All right, I will. It's your funeral. What am I saving you for anyway? Where's my head? In a few minutes, there'll be a knock or a ring or the door will just open, see? And you'll be lying in a pool of blood just like the other three. Goodbye, my worthless. Give my regards to the creeper. That look in his eyes, like a madman's. What if he comes back? He wants to kill me. He wants to kill me. Someone wants to kill me. Like the other three. A pool of blood. Like the other three. Like the other three. Any minute now, there'll be a knock. A ring. <gasps> This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of The Creeper. Thousands of people who suffer the social and business handicap of dandruff are discovering that the way to combat it effectively is with double dandrine. You see, double dandrine is unlike many hair preparations available today. For such products really do no more to fight a common type of dandruff than plain water does. That is, they simply wash loose dandruff away. But double dandrine actually combats this dandruff by killing the germs that many outstanding authorities contend are its cause. And double dandrine kills these germs on contact. Now, a special ingredient named Alzan is the reason for double dandrine's amazing effectiveness. Alzan is an active antiseptic so remarkably efficient, many hospitals use it. And of all hair preparations, only double dandrine has it. So try double dandrine and see if you don't agree that most ordinary hair preparations can't compare with its dandruff-combating effectiveness. If you're not satisfied, return the empty bottle and get your money back. Buy double dandrine at your druggist's. Yes? The druggist is here with the medicine. Shall I let him come up? The medicine? Why, sure, let him... No. Now, don't let that man up. Want me to bring it up? No, no. No, I'm perfectly all right. I don't need it, you hear? Don't you dare come up. Don't anyone. Locksmith? Oh, please. Please, I must have it changed right away. My lock, my door lock. Yes, this is Mrs. Grant. Yes, I do want it, of course. Anyone can get in here, anyone. They want to murder me, but I don't know who. It's the creeper. You'll come right away? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, but hurry, please. Hurry, I'll go out of my mind. Oh, 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 thank the Lord. What if he doesn't come in time? Like the other three. A pool of blood. Any minute now, there'll be a knock. Ring. <laughs> Who's there? It's me, dear, Mrs. Stone. Oh. What do you want? Why, I've been worried about you. Are you ill? No. No, I'm all right, Mrs. Stone. I'm feeling fine. Open up, dear. Don't you want me to keep you company? No. No, thank you. I was just... Stop it! Oh, let me in, silly. No, no, no. Go away. I'm going to sleep. Go away. You hear me? Go away. Hello. Oh, Georgia, you all right? Oh, Steve, Steve. I've been so frantic. It's so good to hear your voice. Where are you? At headquarters. Coming right home. Sweetheart, is anything wrong? You sound... Oh, not now. Not when I hear you, Steve. I I don't know what came over me all day. I've I've been imagining things so silly. My nerves. Forgive me for this morning, darling. I I wasn't myself. 
myself. My job had me down, but now everything's... Oh, of course, okay. forgive me, Steve. I've been bad, bad, wicked. Oh, if you know what I've gone through today. The most dreadful state. And then that... Oh, Steve, did you send someone here today? Early chase. And you did. To keep you company. Isn't he still with you? I know. I, I just got rid of him. I wish you hadn't. He's an all right guy, smart reporter. Lives in the neighborhood, too. Honey, I know it sounds cockeyed. I mean, Burley's theory, but I was a bit worried when I got to thinking, so... Listen, Georgia. Don't let anyone in the house till I get home. Oh, I won't, Steve. Not anyone, do you hear? Not anyone. Oh, oh, wait, Steve. Locksmith. Hello. Oh, wait, Steve, it's... Oh, thank goodness, at last. Now I can breathe easy. Just a minute, dear. Hello, Georgia. Georgia, hello. Hi. Hello. Georgia. Oh, thank goodness Georgia, you've come. Please step in. It's the lock on this door hello. I want. Uh, just a moment. Hello. My husband's on the phone. Steve? Something else I wanted to... Oh, it's all right. Everything's all right now, Steve. You needn't worry. Didn't I just hear you talking to someone? Was that someone at the door? It was no one, Steve. Just Mr. Frank, the locksmith. Oh, what a load the of... locksmith? Georgia, listen. Listen, Georgia, that's what I was going to tell you. What is it? The police are on a new trail. They think maybe a locksmith. Georgia, you're listening? It may be that the creeper's a locksmith. <laughs> Get him out, quick. What nice lipstick you use, Mrs. Grant. <laughs> 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 me before I kill more. For heaven's sake. Hello, city desk. Pearly Chase. Now shut up and listen. On that creeper story I just gave you, I had this dope. The reward for his capture goes to the elevator boy. He heard Georgia Grant scream and called a cop. The creeper was shot running from the building. Yeah, it's ironical, isn't it? Imagine the locksmith was the killer. The one man Georgia thought would protect him. What an ending to a lovely, lovely redhead. <laughs> Now, this is Jeffrey Barnes bringing down the final curtain on tonight's presentation of The Creeper. Join us again next week when we present a hard-boiled crime story entitled Spanish Blood and written by one of the greatest names in detective fiction, Raymond Chandler. Mr. Chandler is known to all of you as the writer of the recent hit movie, Murder, My Sweet. So don't miss a real hard-hitting, hard-boiled melodrama next week when we present Raymond Chandler's Spanish blood. The original music for the Mole Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Sandler. The Creeper was written by Joseph Ruskol, and Charlotte Manson was featured in tonight's program. This is Dan Seymour saying good night until next Friday at this same time when the Mystery Theater presents Spanish Blood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>